into this APC and today I'm making this tutorial. And today we're going to talk about arithmetic. So we're going to learn how to take variables and we're going to learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them. But we're also going to learn about something called modulus and incrementing and decrementing and decrementing. Now most of this is going to be syntax based, but there are two different methods basically that we're, I'm going to teach you and I'll just outline both of them right now. I'll just use adding as an example because that's the easiest one. So the first way, you're going to create two variables either way. So we can call the first variable A, variable A, second variable B. So you can either say, create a third variable called C and say C equals A plus B. And by doing that, you can use C as your, as your sum of A and B later on. Or you can add B to A and therefore change the variable A and you can use A as the sum. But both ways will work just as well, but it just depends on which situation you're in and how you want to do it really. And the other thing that probably doesn't sound familiar is the modulus part. The modulus is, is, isn't that hard, but you don't use it in everyday life, so you don't really learn, learn about it in, in schools as much. But it's used all the time in programming, so what modulus is, is it gives you the remainder of value. So, for instance, if you take modulus of 3, modulus 3 of 5, you get 2, because if you divide 5 by 3, 3 will go into 5 once and there's 2 left over. Take, take 15 modulus 6. 6 will go into 15 twice, and then there's 3 left over, so 15 modulus 6 is 3. So that's how modulus works. The other thing I was going to talk about today is incrementing and decrementing, which means adding one or subtracting, which you use a lot, especially in loops in, in programming, so it's good to know, and it's, it'll make things, your life a little bit, just a little bit easier by doing that rather than just adding, going manually adding one. So now you know that's what we're going to cover, and now we can go ahead and cover it. Okay, so we're back on our, on our computer with Notepad++ and CMD, and as always, I'm going to need to save Notepad++ first. Just navigate over to your file, and we're going to call this project arithmetic.java. Now, this is the last time I'm going to go through this, so make sure you understand that this .java replaces this. So if you put .java, make sure you put down all types. Or, you could take away this .java at the end and specify it here, and in this case, we need to find .java in the .menu, and, and do it like this. Take away the .java, and it'll come out like that. So, either way is fine, and this is the last time I'm going to make that distinction. Okay, so now we got saved, and now we're going to find the class of so public class arithmetic. Alright, and this is also the last time I'm going to just remind you that the name you put down in the class, so arithmetic, needs to match the name of the file. So, being arithmetic, Arithmetic Java. You have down Arithmetic dot Java as the name of the class it has to be spelled the same way, and it's case sensitive. So now you know, and you, know, you should never forget it now because it's third time. Never mind. Okay, so then we got to put down our main method, and it's, this still isn't something you need to understand. It's only something you need to memorize. Public static void main string arc. And there you go. That's the main method right there. And now we're going to create two variables. Byte A set equal to 5, and byte B set equal to 3. So we're going to learn how to add and subtract today, so we're just going to use these two variables, and I'm going to show you how to do mathematical operations with them. So now I'm going to go through the four basic math operations and show you how each of them work. So that's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So, so we're going to create a new variable, byte add, set it equal to A plus N semicolon. And keep in mind that when, when you say a plus b, it'll re represents the variable a and the variable b. So it'll add 5 plus 3 and this should be set equal to 8. But there's one thing you need to know about this. If you remember the last tutorial I told you that if you haven't, when you're setting things variable, it's still temporarily set to an integer when you're still, it's still in the process of setting to a variable. So it'll say a plus b calculate it, come out with a, and it'll put that, set that equal to an integer, and then it'll move it, and then it'll transfer it over to the byte add. But the problem with that is, is the computer when it's converting down to from integer over to byte, it'll think we're not sure if this will convert over correctly because if you if it's too big for a byte and we convert over to a byte, it'll come out weird. So it'll get it'll give you complaints saying that it can't do this. And in order to avoid that, you put down byte. I'm gonna put this in parentheses just to be safe. Put down byte. So this way it'll calculate this and then it'll convert over to a byte and then set equal to add, which is a byte. So it should be a problem. Well, we just do this to make the computer happy? We're just telling it, um, don't worry, it'll convert over fine. And even if it doesn't, we'll, we are willing to accept the consequences. So now we're gonna print this out system.out.println. This method right here should look familiar to you. The method that prints out the screen should pop in your head every time you see that. And we're going to put down in, in the abbreviations a plus b equals. And then we're going to say plus add. Remember that this is an abbreviation, so it'll literally put down a plus b equals. And this is not an abbreviation, so it'll search for the variable add, which is right here, and it'll print out what it gets, which should be 8 in this case. Okay, so now I can move a little bit quicker now that I've explained this one, because the other ones work very similarly. Say byte sub subtraction equals this one also needs to be it's gonna eventually need to be converted over to byte just for the same reason as add and then I put down a minus b in the parentheses and semicolon. Then we're gonna print it out again. This gonna put out a minus b, say so equal to, and then plus sub. Next. Add addition, subtraction, now multiplication. Byte mult. So equal to. This also needs to have have the 
convert over to byte for the same reason as the previous ones. This time I put dot a times b. The, the time symbol is a little weird, it's um, actually the star. You find it above 8 in programming like density multiplication symbol since it's not really that as clear as, mul as addition subtraction symbol on the keyboard. Semicolon end it. Print it out. And now a times b is so equal to plus mult. There we go. So that's the first three. Now, now last is division. This one's gonna be a little bit different. So first thing that you had five divided by three. What is that? One point four, right? I hope that's I hope that's right. Um, so one point four. If you follow my last last tutorial and you understand it, you'll know that um, we can't set a byte equal to one point four. So we're gonna have to make something different from byte. We're gonna make it a float. So we're gonna call it float div. Set it equal to a divided by b. And that div is is uh, forward slash. If you um, we have, remember we had problems up here with other ones with current integer. We have the same problem here. It's going to convert to integer, so it will see it'll do a divided by b come up 1.4, and it'll, and it'll convert it down to, over to an integer, which means it'll either be it'll probably be two. I, th I think it'll uh, it always rounds up to two, but it might be one as well that'll eventually come up about s. So if we put down like this, like the other ones, and convert it down to flow, it'll first calculate this. It'll come up with one or two, and then it'll convert it to a flow, and then you get 1.0, which is a float version of that. So, so we want it to be a float before we calculate it out. So we'll take away those parentheses. So it'll know a is a float, and whenever you do um, a float divided by a byte, it'll take on whichever one's the most precise. So in this case, float's more precise, and it will take go with the go with float. Now we're going to print it out. System dot out dot print ln a divided by b equals plus div. Same same old same old. Okay. Now, control S to save it. And now that you've got it saved, we'll compile it. So, Java C arithmetic. Arithmetic.java. Wait for it. Compile, find no errors. Now we're going to say Java arithmetic. And here we go. So, A plus B equals 8. That, that's right. 5 plus 3 equals 8. A minus B equals 2. So 5 minus 3 equals 2. Yes. A times B equals 15. Yes. A dot B is 1.66666. That's embarrassing. I said 1.4. I guess I should have thought that through more before I said that. Oh well. So those all count perfectly. And now there's a few more other things I, w I wanted to show you. Moving, moving back over here. So with all of these, you have to create a new variable, which is a, a little bit of a pain. You, you never want to have a lot of variables, especially if you're not using them. So another thing we could do, let's say that A is the score, or something like that, and B is the value I want to add to the score. So if we want to do that, we could do simply do A plus equals B. and Done. It, that's a lot shorter than something like this, isn't it? Just, just like that. It goes a lot quicker if you, if, if it works for your situation. So we're gonna just, I'm just gonna put down this adds b to a. So a will equal eight, and b will stay equal to five, or three, sorry. So a will equal eight, and b will equal three. Be sure that the addition symbol goes before the equals sign, because that means that you want to add it to it. If you did something like this, you either get an error or it'll said a equal to b. So you gotta make sure that the addition symbol is before the equal sign for it to work. Next one, I'm gonna say a minus equals b. Subtract b from a. So it'll come out with two. And you can also say a times equals b. Come out with 15. A will say b set equal to 15. Multiplies a by b. And last, we're going to say a divided by equals 3. Now, remember how this equals 1.6666? This will actually be converted over to byte because it's incompa incompatible to byte. So it'll actually be converted over to 1 or 2 rather than this one. But we're not going to deal with that right now. We could convert a over to a float first, but we, we don't want to do that. I, I, I just want to show you the operations. So I'm going to say a divided by equal divided by equals b. This will this divides a by b. Now this will probably come out equal to two, just because um, a is a byte and byte can only work with whole numbers, so it will it'll come up with 1.666 and round it over to two. We could um, create we'd have to create a new variable. And it would have to be a float in order for this to work. But I just want to show you the content of this. So I'll spend parentheses here. Does not work. 
correctly because A is a byte. There. So now we'll just test all these out, see if they work. I'm going to say system dot out dot print ln A. There we go. And I'm going to just limit it to the first one, just so we can test just the first one. Because if we did, because if we if I didn't make these comments, it would say a plus b equal to a, a minus b, so it's b five, a times b is fifteen, a divided b. So it actually come out the same way five. But we just want to test each one out individually. So I'm going to save, compile, run, and there you go. It comes out as eight. And now. I'm going to make this one a comment, and the next one normal, and I'm going to just edit out the compiling. There you go, two, as it should, comment, next one, 15, as it should, and last one, one, and as I said, it would round it, apparently it rounded down rather than up like I said, so different from what I said, but it rounded just like I said. Okay, so now there's three more operations I want to show you. We'll start with incrementing and decrementing. Um, there's a lot of times in in, um, in programming where you want to add just one or subtract just one from a variable, and you could say a plus if if you were working, if you were wanting to add one to a, you could say a plus equals a one. Sorry, and that works. But with incrementing and decrementing, you could say a plus plus and achieve the same thing. So. A plus plus is the same as A plus equals one. It adds one to A. Simple as that. And then all in the same way, there's A minus minus. So it's A minus minus is the same as A minus equals one. It subtract sub track one from A. Okay, so um, we'll test these out. Comes out as six. That's adding one to A. Five plus one is six. Good. And then if I make this one a comment and this one normal, comes out as four, which is what it's supposed to count. So now you know those ones. Last one I want to show you. This one's going to be called modulus or remainder. And I'm, I saved it for last. It's a little bit special because you probably have not heard of this before because it's not taught very readily, but it's still a pretty simple concept to grasp. So what it is is we're going to say A percentage sign B. No, equals B. There we go. This gives the remainder of A divided by B. Okay, what's that mean? What this does is it does a divided by b and it thinks b goes into a once, once. So a minus that one time that b goes into a. Okay. And then it gives what's left over after that's taken away. So it's so two would be what's left over. That probably wasn't the best way to explain it. Let me give a few more examples. Five percentage sign um, three equals two because if three is, is is taken from five as many times as it can, you'll get two. And ten percentage sign ten percentage sign four also equals two because four can go in ten twice. Four times two is eight. Ten minus two is. 21 percentage sign 4 equals 1. 4 goes into 21 5 times. If you take all of those out, you have 1 left over. Okay, so I hope this explains modulus correctly. So with that, A percentage sign B will leave two, A equaling 2 because B goes, goes into A once, and then after you take that away, what's left over is 2. So let's save, compile, and run one more time, and we get two, just like I said. Um, if you don't want to know how I type into so quickly, you can press up arrow to 
like a previous one, and then down arrow to go down. It's a little hanging trick. Okay, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful, and I hope you actually learned something as well. And in order to check whether you learned something, I have a challenge set up right now. Let's see if you can do it. So for today's challenge, I want to make a class that can help you to solve the function, uh, perform calculation of the function y equals 15x plus 23. So here's the program I made. It'll print out what x equals, y, x equals 8, and then it'll print out function using 15x plus 23, and then it'll print out what y comes out to be when x is plugged in. So if we move over to our class, um, you have variable x and set to 80, and you should be able to set it to any number, and it will and go through the steps as um, as it would with 80. I just purposely zoomed in so you won't be able to see how I coded it. So um, so that's all for this tutorial. Um, please rate, comment, subscribe, or if you if you found it helpful, please rate, comment, subscribe, and support the video and, and uh, get it out to more people. And if you found this this challenge helpful and you think you, you think more would help you get a better grasp of Java, I, I have more, and you, and you can check them out on my website, sinforge.co. You can also find my games and all my tutorials on my, on my website. It's also a work in progress, so any um, critique on the website would, would be greatly appreciated. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.